Rescue Community Connections with Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. I am but one of your hosts this afternoon, morning, <laughs> whenever you happen to be viewing and or listening to this program. And with me is? Ashley Mock. And I, and I say all that, and I know that sounded kind of strange <laughs> for those people that listen to the radio show on, when, or on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., but today we are in the studios of WLX, the St. Lucie County School Board Channel, uh, broadcasting this network or this program, if you will, not only through the radio waves on 104.5 The Flame, but also through the St. Lucie Education We're Channel. We're multitasking today. We're multitasking, <laughs> and it kind of throws us off. Once <laughs> so at, we do this show because we want to connect you, the listener, and the viewer to what resources and ways that you can get involved and make a difference in the community. And at the Children's Services Council, we are uniquely qualified to do this because we do five things in the community. And those five things are, one, make sure every baby's a healthy baby, two, stop child abuse before it happens, three, keep kids off the streets, four, keep them in school, and five, keep them off drugs, alcohol, and other risky behaviors. Did you behaviors. forget? Well, I thought, I couldn't remember if I said number two correctly or not. See, you're all, you're all thrown I'm off today. I'm flustered because we're in the television studio. Well, and we were here last week doing another show, so it's, yeah, we're, yeah. we've just got too much going on. Um, but Sean talked about those five priority areas, and we have a couple different ways where you can get more information about the programs that are involved in those areas with us. And the best way is on our website, which is cscslc.org. We've got all of the information about our funded programs, success stories about the programs, and contact information. And in addition to um, all of those programs, um, or on our website, we've got our family guide, which is basically a printed version of the information you can get off the website. These are out, uh, we've probably distributed more than 30,000 of these in the last couple of years. They are in community organizations, businesses, libraries, all over town. And if you have a place where you would like to have some of these distributed as well, just give us a call at 408-1100 and we can get some dropped off to you. And we also have an app. We have an app. Um, it's a free, we love free, um, a free mobile app that's available for both the Apple and the Android platform. Um, it gives you access to all of the information about our funded programs. Um, one of the cool things that we do over the summer with our app is that, and actually it's on my list of things to talk about today, so I'll just jump into that. Um, we sponsor the summer movies at Treasure Treasure Coast Regal Theater down in Jensen Beach at the mall every summer in partnership with um, the Quit Doc Foundation of Martin County. And one of the things that we do with the app over the summer is do notifications every week of what the movies are going to be. And I actually happen to see the schedule of movies for the summer and they are really great. They're playing the Lego Batman movie, they're playing Sing. They're playing Rio 2. There are some really good movies that we're going to get Lego this summer. Lego Batman was just out. Yeah, well, the Lego movie was out. Lego Batman was out recently, too. But um, really great list of movies. So stay tuned to the app. Stay tuned to our website and to our Facebook page so you can keep track of when those movies. They start Tuesday, June 6th. At 10 a.m. At 10 a.m. So it's a great way to take your kids, your grandkids, your neighborhood kids, <laughs> get out of the heat of the summer because it's hot already. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a dollar to get in, right? One dollar, that's it. Now, I will add, I will address this because a lot of people ask, well, how come you guys sponsor the movie theater that's at the Treasure Coast Mall, which is in Jensen Beach? Well, first of all, just so you know, 60% of the people that go to the movie theater at the <laughs> Treasure Coast Mall are from St. Lucie County. That's from their statistics. But also because... Uh, we have work, tried to work with the other theater that's in St. Lucie County, but... Um, and we're still working. We're still we're working on it, but we want to make sure that it's low cost, if not no cost for families, and a dollar, you really can't beat that. Right. So definitely stay tuned to the app. The app is a great way to get the information. Again, we push all the movies at the beginning of the week, so you know what's coming, and you can make plans, but um, one dollar for a movie is can't beat that. And if you forget about it, you know, you're like, oh, you know, I keep forgetting about that movie. Like us on Facebook. We'll post that stuff all the time, especially the all movies, the because I will be wondering where Ashley's at, <laughs> because I have a feeling she'll be at some of these summer movies with her kids. Maybe, maybe. All right. So it's also summer. This this program, uh, the video will at least run through June. So if your child is not enrolled in a summer program, we do this great thing that happens around May or June <laughs> is all of our after school programs, all 16 locations turn into summer programs that offer programs at a very affordable, if not free price for families, particularly those families that have multiple kids. And we also put in additional resources to expand that. So I believe we have up to, do you know how many altogether? Uh, not to put you on the spot. 
I, well, I'm not good at math, but I'm going to say 28. 28, <laughs> potentially. But the 28 <laughs> resources for families uh, for the summer. So if you don't know what your child is going to do during the summer, now is the time to jump on our website, cscslc.org. There's a picture of a summer. Mm -hmm. uh, I say a the picture sun. of the summer. There's a picture of the, the sun, sun. <laughs> which is you know, clearly universal for summer. Uh, click on that. It lists all the programs. Make the calls. Find the one that's closest to your home that might be of interest to your child. Go take a tour and register your child now before they all fill up. And just there are some specialty camps. So, you know, we always talk about ensuring that all of our summer programs have a learning component, um, and all of them do. But there are some other camps that focus on some sort of extracurriculars, I guess. The Future Generations, which focuses on music all summer. We have a new basketball camp this year. Um, there's another sports camp happening in Port St. Lucie. So read through the descriptions and find something that you think might interest your child because there's a lot of offers this summer. And I'm glad you brought up that educational piece because even the basketball camp, <laughs> you know, they're going to weave in some educational, some learning activities. So, you know, obviously we want to have our children occupied and, and doing fun things in the summer, but we also want to implement, you know, strategically uh, some summer learning so that they're Gotta kind of, sneak it in there. So we can avoid that summer slide, if you will, so that when they start the school year, they're ready to go. We have another really great thing that's happening to kind of kick off summer, and that is through our St. Lucie Reads partnership, which if you've been watching or listening for a while, you've certainly heard about St. Lucie Reads and our efforts to um, increase grade level reading in our community. Um, but on Friday, June 2nd, all of the St. Lucie Reads partners are coming together along with support from FPL to kind of do a kickoff to summer that we're calling Slide Into Reading. It's going to be a free, totally free family event. Um, we are, with FPL's help, again, we're having, we've got 4,000 tickets to give away to the baseball game that's happening that night. So. Um, we want every child and their family to be able to come to the game at no cost. And through the first part of the game, we will be giving away free books um, up on the terrace area. So we're really excited about it. We've got a lot of information about this, again, up on our Facebook page and on our website. But it's Friday, June 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Come, enjoy the game, get a free book. Um, it'll be a really fun night. I like how you worded it. It's free. And then, then you said totally free. <laughs> So when she says it's totally free, totally all free. you have to do is show up. That's we have it. bought enough tickets so that any child that comes with their family can get into the game for free. Um, and like you said, it's a great family, fun to go to the Mets game. I went to the Mets game. Uh, yeah, you went to the Star Wars game. I went to the game. Star Wars game. I brought my son, who normally is not into sports <laughs> at all. You know, he's 17 years old, never been into sports, but, but he, he was really Star into Wars. it. He loves Star Wars. He was really into it. And he asked me, he's like, can we come back to more games? I'm like, we can on June 2nd. On June 2nd. <laughs> After you help volunteer and pass out books, you can enjoy the rest of the game. So by all means, come out June 2nd, completely free. No strings attached. As Ashley said, totally free. All you got to do is show up, and we'll make sure you get into the game, and we'll make sure your child leaves with a book. So we got a great guest that's waiting patiently. We do. I don't know about patiently, but yeah, she's I've been. She's been giving me eye contact. I haven't decided if it was like, get to me soon, or nervous energy. Yeah, so um, probably, again, some... Some longtime listeners or watchers, view, watchers, viewers, viewers of our show um, will remember that we, a couple different months throughout the year, we talk a lot about my family personally. Um, we talk about Foster Care Awareness Month and we talk about Adoption Month because those are two things that are very near and dear to my family. Um, and this month of May happens to be Foster Care Awareness Month. So. We're really lucky to have with us Christina Kaiser from Devereaux Community-Based Care. Um, and, you know, I share a lot of, I feel like I share a lot of information throughout the year on foster parenting and adoption and the opportunities to do both of those things. Thank you. And through, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> um, and through the Heart Gallery, we talk about it from time to time. But May is really the time that um, agencies across the country draw attention to foster care and foster parents and take time to kind of appreciate what their role is in the whole system for children in care. Absolutely, we, um, it, it, it's nice to have that month long focus on something as important to us as foster care. 
Um, but it's really a year-long um, process. We always need foster parents. We always need people to understand what that means and who, who those families are. So we're constantly out there trying to tell those stories. So, you know, I, I said thank you when, <laughs> when you started off talking about how you, you spend so much time talking about your experiences in foster care. Um, and as an adoptive family, but that's, you know, I, I don't mean that facetiously in any way. It's only through telling these stories that people start, you know, we start a dialogue um, and, it, and it keeps going. And it, it needs to because uh, foster care really is the foundation of what we do in child welfare. I'm sorry, go okay. ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, talk a little bit. So child welfare is sort of a complicated system, mm -hmm. if you will, especially for people who don't understand kind of how it all works and kind of explain to our viewers and listeners how Devereaux fits into that sure. process, I, I guess. I actually have, um, over the years, I've, I've come up with a, an analogy that seems to resonate pretty well. And, and basically, if you've ever had a house built, um, then, then you, might, you might think about us as the general contractors of child welfare. So we are responsible for getting the house built, getting the system built. We are the system of care. And um, where you, if you were building a house, the general contractor would be responsible for hiring the plumber or the, contra or the, um, the carpenter or the roofer um, and so on. We are responsible for building a system, for hiring, um, somebody, for instance, ch uh, Children's Home Society to uh, provide adoption services or case management, or uh, we are responsible for hiring hibiscus to ensure that, for example, we have um, beds in a group home. Uh, we are responsible for hiring Castle to provide, um, you know, an, ar an, an array of parenting type classes. So it goes on and on, um, and, and that you know, that seems to resonate with people because it's true. It gets a little tricky. It's a very complicated system fraught with human frailties. I mean, we're talking about, it's a messy, messy place, child welfare, um, because we're talking about um, human beings at their most vulnerable, at their frailest, uh, and we are, you know, they're, they're not in a place to, a good place to parent, and so oftentimes, uh, we have to remove their children, and but at the same time, we we do believe in um, the redemption that comes with child welfare. And the majority of parents, uh, nobody starts out this journey of parenthood thinking, "Oh, I'm going to hurt my kids." Mm -hmm. No, you know, I mean, there are drivers to child abuse, um, and there are three: it's domestic violence, it's drug um, substance abuse and it's mental health, mental illness. And oftentimes, you know, those monsters don't come alone. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they usually come in threes anyway. So these are issues that we're dealing with, um, you know, keeping in mind that most people can be redeemed, that they can be retaught, that their children can be safely uh, returned to them. But um, while that's happening often, children have to be removed from home and they need a place to stay. They need a safe and loving home. Um, and, and research has shown us that the, the best um, place for them is a, is a family environment. And, and that, of course, is a foster home. So that brings us to <laughs> our point, um, this month is foster care month. And do we have enough homes? No, will we ever? <laughs> Probably not because there are a lot of nuances to uh, taking care of children. You might have 100 kids. Does that mean you, you only need 100 homes? Probably not, because those children come with siblings. Those children come with, you know, their different ages and different foster homes um, are licensed to take different, different age groups. So the more homes that we have, the more diverse the network and the, the more able we are to put kids, keep kids together. Well, let's talk about that for a minute because, you know, we we talk about the need for foster homes. I feel like every year when this topic comes up, it's something that we talk about. And there's never enough. And like you said, there probably will never be enough 
Um, but what what does our community look like now? What, what How many kids are in care and how many foster homes do we have? Well, the good news is we are definitely making progress. Not just making progress, we are making huge strides. Uh, we are at 159 homes right now and we have approximately 250 children in what we call licensed out-of-home care. So these are children who have been removed from home. Um, they're not in kinship care because we weren't able to identify appropriate uh, relative setting for them. So they either need to be in a foster home or in a, or in a group home. Um, that 100 and, when I say 159, 159 mm -hmm. homes, compare that to about two years ago, we were still under 100. Mm -hmm. So we've done some significant, and, and when I say we, you know, our, our our mission is to ensure the safety, permanency, and well-being of all children through a community network of family support services. So when I say we, I'm talking about that network. I'm talking about Camelot Community Care. I'm talking about four kids of the Treasure Coast, Place of Hope, Mount Bethel Human Services. These are our four child placing agencies that are out there every day, street fairs and regular fairs and just everywhere they can be um, trying to recruit, begin to continue the dialogue of foster care, recruit new homes, license and train. And they have in the last uh, two years, like I said, from less than 100 to almost 160 homes. That's awesome. It is awesome, thank you. It's very but there, there's still a need. There's a, there is still a need. Um, we have When, when we don't have the, the, the right diversity of homes, often what happens is you might have, we, we had a sibling group of four come in last Thursday, and we could talk about sanctuary if you wanted a little <laughs> bit later, but, but fortunately we have an assessment center now um, where we're able to pull back and try, you know, we've got a little extra time to try to keep those children together. Um, unfortunately, it's still a large sibling group. There were four of them. So those children ended up in two separate homes. Now they were two foster homes um, and pretty well connected to one another, but they're still separate homes. What we would really like to see is a network of homes so diverse that we have, a, we have five kids come into care. Those five kids can go to the same home because, I mean, you, you have three children. I can do. You? And I and have four. To me, the the worst scenario isn't isn't my family imploding and my children coming into care. The worst case scenario for me, my nightmare would be my four daughters being separated. Mm -hmm. And that, so. that's tough. My kids were separated before they came to mm -hmm. us. They were in two different homes um, before they moved in with us as a placement. Um, and that the hardest part. You know, and, and there's a lot of research, too, that says that being separated from your parent is traumatizing, but being separated from your siblings is far worse. The, the strongest, greatest bond that we carry through life is the sibling bond. And, and that's important. So I think, you know, keeping them together is, is a big deal. Um, if someone who's listening has thought about being a foster parent before and always gone back to the, you know, what I always hear is, I could never do that. I could never give them up, I could never love them and then give them back. Um, what, what kind of information can we put out there about the licensing agencies or about kind of what the first step to take is if it's something that you're considering? Well, uh, first of all, I love that you, you started with, you know, I could never give them up because we just started an initiative. Um, every year we uh, try to focus on a different type of recruitment. We, recruitment of foster homes. This year we have an initiative called One School, One Child, where we, we have decided that we've identified that teachers, teachers and, and people who work in the school setting, they really have the skill set and the heart that, to make for excellent caregivers. So we're really focusing in the schools right now. And I recently videotaped um, a caregiver um, at one of the St. Lucie County schools, Jade Joy, mm -hmm. and she said exactly the same thing. You know, people tell her all the time, oh, I could never do that, I could never give them up. 
And she says, yes, it's difficult, but that's when I know I've, I've, that's mm -hmm. when I've, that's when I know I've made my impact. That's when I know I've done the job. Uh, because that is your job. Your job is to provide a safe, loving, beautiful environment, home for these children while their families are healing. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the, of, of that process, the children can go home because that is the best place for them more times than not. The, the way you can get involved and learn more about the, the process, because it is a little, you know, it's... I do. <laughs> there, it's, it's intense. Uh, we don't just put other people's... You know, these, these are not our children. Right. These are other people's children. We have been given a, a great responsibility, and we take that very seriously. So we're not just going to pluck a child mm -hmm. from the bosom of his home and put him in with a stranger. No. We have... Um, each one of our child placing agencies, which I mentioned before, they have a schedule of, of training classes. There are a certain, I believe it's now 20 hours. Um, it's very flexible. You can choose to do Saturday classes, weeknight classes. You can find all that information um, and contact information by going on our website to uh, www dcbckids.org and just clicking on the foster and adoptive parent icon. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. You, you make a call, you s schedule an appointment with that uh, child placing agency for an orientation, they give you an overview, they give you an idea of what you can expect and you can decide at that point, oh, this, this might be too much for me or, oh, okay, I can do that. And then you're scheduled into the, um, the next training. And then you spend those 20 hours. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm, no. I'm pretty sure they're yeah. 20 hours, right? So you spend those 20 hours um, learning about the types of children, the types of behavior, the trauma that um, not only the children have experienced, but the trauma that perhaps their, their families and, and their, uh, the parents have experienced that maybe have put them in a place where they, they can't properly parent. So you learn about all those things. You learn about the system. You learn about how to navigate it, you know, to a certain, <laughs> to a certain degree. There's, with you know, there's help. always a lot of, you know, sink or swim involved with anything. But um, hopefully by the end of those 20 hours, you are uh, well prepared for this adventure in foster care. So I want to kind of take a step back real quick. So we have a need for foster parents. Um, and I know we have a need for sibling groups. You've already mentioned it. So if a, if a children removed from their home for no reason, no fault of their own, and again, the idea is to put them back eventually with their, their natural parents or their, their biological parents. Um, but you're split, sometimes you have to split sibling groups up. You talked about the sibling bond. Sometimes kids that are ready for foster care have to go to group homes out of the area because there's nowhere else for them to go. So we have this huge need, and, and I'm leading to, uh, I did this study or analysis with uh, one of your team members at Devereaux, Sherry Sheffer, mm -hmm. and we found that um, foster- Team member, <laughs> boss. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> we found from the analysis that foster parents come from uh, either uh, the faith community, which was the major area, or um, other foster parents reaching out to the community or people that cared about children. So I say all that because we have a, a radio show as well as a TV show, <laughs> and we know that a lot of people are getting ready for church or coming back from church while listening to this. But you have an outreach effort to work with the churches, and I'm sure you would want more churches to come on board to allow them to talk to their congregation about this need. We do, um, and again, referring back to our child placing agency, one of the one of the things that really started to turn the ship around for us um, as far as licensing of new foster homes was uh, bringing into our system of care, for example, Place of Hope and Four Kids of the Treasure Coast, both um, at Four Kids South Florida, they've, they've since become Four Kids of the Treasure Coast, um, but they specifically recruit within the church community, the faith community. And it was just incredibly successful because, again, you talk about people who are already have an interest and a passion and 
um, believe that, like the Bible says, you know, the Bible teaches that we are to care for the widows and the orphans. So you're you're talking to an audience of people who um, who are ready to hear that message already. So that has been tremendously successful. Yes, and then we brought on Mount Bethel Human Services, which targets the Fort Pierce area, and in particular the African American ministerial um, community. So we've made um, some recent um, progress in that community as well, because not only do we need homes uh, for teenagers and enough homes so that we don't have to split children up, but we would also like to maintain the cultural integrity of our children. Um, there's nothing wrong with putting a, a black child in a white home or a white child in a black home, of course, but there are, um, there are problems with removing a child from his or her community. So we really want to keep them as, as close to home as possible, and so Mount Bethel has really um, helped us to, uh, to accomplish some of, of those goals. So one way that our listeners and viewers can get involved is to outreach to you and connect connect you and, and your partner agencies with the church that they attend and, and forming that partnership. Yeah, they it all it all comes back to us, and we'll get you if you if you go to our website, dcbckids.org, um, and and contact us. We will get you to the. To, to where the rubber meets the road. We'll get you to the organization that will really get you started. So we have a, a couple minutes left on the show, and I want to talk about, because May is Foster Parent Appreciation Month, um, are there any activities upcoming to celebrate? <laughs> no. Besides the show. No, not Besides at all. the show, of course. <laughs> we do. Actually, we have a lot of fun activities. We just, this Saturday, um, you guys familiar with the PSL rocks and oh, yeah. the, the oh, yeah. whole rock hunting yeah. yes. sensation? Well, uh, we got on board with that. And this Saturday, we had a Foster Parent Rocks event. Um, thank you, uh, Melissa McIntyre and PSL Rocks Page. Uh, but we had people come out, and now there are more than 100 rocks in the community that, are, you know, are giving shout-outs to foster parents, fun facts about foster care, where to go for more information, that That's kind of awesome. thing. Yeah. So anyway, we, we did that. Um, this Friday, we have a foster parent dinner, and we do that every year, but new this year, so excited, <laughs> Christian Schmoyer lovingly lovingly referred to as Christian the destroyer Shmoya. she <laughs> is she is that is her that's her that's awesome I, I don't that's that's what she goes by she is the world champion not waterboarding <laughs> champion but uh, flyboarding flyboarding okay. and I don't know if anybody is familiar with this sport it's relatively new but basically um, you are tethered to a jet ski and shot, propelled by water, shot up into the air up to 70 feet, doing flips, and she's doing it at night, so it'll be lit, and That's it's going to be cool. so much fun. So we're doing it, we're, we're, we're providing dinner, a traditional dinner to our foster families, foster, foster parents, you know, dinner and dancing and all that, but um, at I think at 8.30 we're going to be escorting them out to the river to see this amazing... Um, Very and cool. And what, what day is that? Friday. This Friday. And, and I talk. understand you're going to be Facebook live it. I am. All right, so, so everybody excited. check out uh, um, Devro. your yeah, Facebook page De is... Um, Devro Community Based Care on Facebook. Or you can go to Devereaux their website CBC. at dcbckids.org to learn all about foster care. And by all means, help spread the word, even if... Even if you just go to your church and, and connect them with Devro about uh, having them come in to speak, or at the very minimum that you can do is check out their Facebook page and like and share their foster uh, parent appreciation mm -hmm. recruitment efforts to help spread the word. Churches and, we, and schools. We want to get into the schools, too. And we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, viewers, thank you for watching. It's a monthly radio or it's a monthly <laughs> video program, TV program, sorry. It's a weekly radio program on 104.5 The Flame on Sundays at 10 a.m. We want to thank you for listening and or watching. Remember, it's our children, our community, our future. We're all in this together. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.